Hi everybody, welcome back to another Astro Exploring video. My name is Nick and today I'm going to show you how to download Astroberry onto your micro SD card so that you can run Astroberry on your Raspberry Pi. To start, you will need a Raspberry Pi, hopefully that goes without saying, and a micro SD card. And if you go to the website astroberry.io and scroll down and click on the documentation link, and from there, we're going to click on the quick start guide. Actually, before we do that, I'll show you the system requirements because that is quite important. So the minimum requirement for Raspberry Berry is a Raspberry Pi 3, but it recommends a Raspberry Pi 4. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4. There's three different flavors of Raspberry Pi 4, and it all boils down to how much RAM is in the Pi itself. So there's a two gig version, a four gig version, and an eight gig version. I've got the four gig version. You can get the eight gig version if you want, but it's probably a little bit overkill for this, to be honest. And actually it will run on the two gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi 4 if you wanted to save a little bit of money. I thought I'd, that I would just overspec it slightly because it was an extra 20 quid and went for the four four gigabyte version. You'll then need a micro SD card. 32 gig is recommended or a 16 gig as an absolute minimum. I'm using a 32 gig card. If you're looking at buying a Raspberry Pi 4, it's interesting to note actually that a common complaint among users is that it has a tendency to overheat in what you would call the original casing. However, Obviously with astrophotography, our Raspberry Pi is going to be outside. It's going to be exposed to some pretty extreme temperatures in terms of cold. Um, a few nights ago, I was out there and it was minus five degrees Celsius outside. And so actually I've used the original housing for mine because I felt that if it's going to keep it warm while it's outside, that's actually a bonus for me uh, and keeps the dew off it, which is great. So the first thing that we will need to do, of course, is to download Astroberry. And you can do that very easily by going to the download link on the website and clicking on this download button here, and that will download the latest stable release of Astroberry. That's going to download a zip file that's about three and a half gig, and you can save it wherever you want. For the purposes of this demonstration, I've just saved mine on the desktop here. The next step that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to unzip it. And to do that, you can right click and then click on extract all, and you can choose where to extract it to. I'm just gonna extract it onto the desktop next to the zipped folder. With this being quite a large file, I think it's about eight gig in total, it's gonna to take a couple of minutes. So as that's going to take a couple of minutes, there's something that we can do in the background while we're waiting. If you now go to documentation and quick start guide. This will take you through the uh, the installation process, which is really simple. Um, but the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to flash the micro SD card using some software. Flashing is essentially the term that's used for installing the operating system onto the drive. You can't simply copy and paste the image file onto the SD card because that won't work. We need to actually install it. And the process of doing that is called flashing. So if you follow this link here, that's called etcher.io, that will take you to this website here. And you can just click on this download link um, for Windows, but it is available for Mac and Linux as well. And once that's downloaded, this is what the software looks like. Okay, so now that that has finished unzipping the files, we are going to click on flash from file. And then we're going to browse to where we've saved it. In my case, that's on the desktop. And this is the file that we want to install onto the drive. So we're gonna click on that and then click open. As you can see, it's nearly eight gig. Now we're gonna to want to select our target, which in our case will be our micro SD card. So if you haven't already, now is the time to put your micro SD card into your laptop or PC and click on select target. You would then tick this box to select that and click on select and then you'll click on flash. I'm not actually gonna do this because this is a, a different SD card, but I'm just using it for the purposes of this video. Uh, and that's gonna take a few minutes to run. Now, once your SD card is flashed, you can go ahead and safely remove it from your computer and place it into your Raspberry Pi and go ahead and turn your Raspberry Pi on. And make sure that you just leave it for a couple of minutes before the next step so that it's had time to boot up for the first time. But the next thing that we're gonna to want to do is we're gonna to want to connect the Raspberry Pi, which will have created its own Wi-Fi hotspot. And you can follow all of this information. It's just in this section here. And for the first boot, that's specifically this section here. Essentially what we're going to do now that the Raspberry Pi is on, 
Go down to the bottom right hand side in my case to click on the Wi-Fi settings. And here, and mine won't do it because I've booted mine up many times and mine's connected to my Wi-Fi and I don't want to delete the settings. Uh, but in here, as you can see, as it says on the website, there will be an entry in here that's called Astroberry. And when you see that, click on it. It's going to ask for a password and the password is Astroberry, all lowercase, as you can see on the website here. Once that has connected, you're going to want to open a tab on your browser. In my case, I'm using um, Google Chrome and you can point your browser to either astroberry.local or the IP address 104201. Um, I always just use the address because it's easier to remember. So I'm going to click on that to open it in a new tab. If you get an error to say that your connection isn't private, then just click on advanced and then click proceed. It's not um, it's not a problem. So this is the landing page for Astroberry. The first thing that we need to do is click on start. That is going to take us to the login screen. And all we need to do now is click on connect. And it's going to ask for a password. Again, the password is just Astroberry, all lowercase. Hit return. And it's going to log on for the first time and this is the astroberry desktop next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to connect astroberry to our home wi-fi and to do that we go to the signal symbol in the top right hand corner right click and then edit connections and the reason that we want to do this is so that we can download updates so we want to click on this little plus button here choose a connection type uh, in my case, I'm using Wi-Fi. You might be using something different. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click Wi-Fi, create, and then it's going to come up with these settings. So the SSID is the name of your network. In my case, that would be this um, Sky ID here. Once you've typed in the ID of the network, click on the next tab, which is Wi-Fi security. Click on the drop down box and for my network, and this is probably true for pretty much all home networks these days, it's going to be using a WPA2 personal encrypted password. So you're going to want to click on that. It's going to ask for your password. So that will either be on the back of your home router or if you've changed it to something from the default, then you would type that in there. Then we're going to go over to the next tab, which is IPv4 settings, and just make sure that it, uh, DHCP is ticked so that it fetches the IP address automatically to connect to the internet. And then once you've done all that, go ahead and click save. And once that's saved, if it doesn't automatically connect to the network, then just left click on the Wi-Fi symbol and click on your home Wi-Fi network. Once you've changed your Wi-Fi settings on your Raspberry Pi, then you can go ahead and connect back to your home Wi-Fi instead of the Astroberry local. And it may do that automatically. It may disconnect you from the Pi as soon as you've connected to your home network because you'll no longer be on the Astroberry local hotspot. If it does that, don't be worried. Just make sure that you connect back to your home network and you can access Astroberry in exactly the same way as you did before. If you just refresh the tab that your browser was on and make sure that the address is astroberry.local forward slash desktop and then it will load. It might just take a couple of minutes just while it's rebooting itself. So now that we're connected to the home Wi-Fi, we'll now want to download and install any updates that have happened to Astroberry since this version was released. So to do that, we are gonna go and click on the terminal button at the top left here. And we're gonna run a couple of actions, but just in one command. Again, you can get this off the Astroberry website. Here it is that command that we're going to type there. Now don't worry if you're not a Linux expert or anything like that, you don't need to be. This is the only thing that we're going to really do in Terminal. So we're going to type sudo, that's just going to give us admin rights to be able to install updates. sudo apt update and then two and signs sudo apt upgrade. I'm typing around my microphone here. Two ands again, sudo apt dist upgrade. And once you've typed that, hit enter. It's going to ask you for the sudo password, which again is just astroberry. 
and then it is going to download and install all of those updates for us. While it does that, if you want to know more about what those commands actually mean, then apt update will fetch the update packages from the internet and apt upgrade will install those updates for us. Dist upgrade command will intelligently install updates. So it will upgrade packages and at the same time it will remove any old dependencies. So it's a little bit of a cleaner install than it would be if you just went and upgraded everything willy-nilly because you would still keep those old dependencies and it would just clog up your system unnecessarily. So you will save a bit of space by doing it this way. And once this has completed, that is everything done. You're now ready to start playing around with all of the drivers and the software and actually connecting it to your astrophotography equipment for a night of imaging. And all you need now is a clear sky, but uh, I'm afraid I can't help you <laughs> with that one. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up because that really helps me out. Remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so that you're notified every time I do an upload. I will see you guys in the next video, which will be all about a, a big overview of everything that is in Astroberry, the software, how to use it, how to select the right drivers and everything like that. So make sure that you keep a lookout for that. My name is Nick and you've been watching Astro Explorer and I'll see you guys next time.